Welcome to Tony at 12. I'm Tony LeBlanc and today I'm in conversation with Robert McDowell and today we're going to talk about Robert's recent visit to Armenia. Robert, good to see you. And you as well, uh, uh, Tony. Yes. And, and, uh, and how, how did you get to Armenia? Well, it, it, it was all to do with folklore, um, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Um, uh, it, it, I, I, I've known over the year a number of people from Armenia who study folklore. Folklore is quite big in Armenia because it's a very important element of their sort of national identity. But one who have been to the UK to different conferences and uh, I got an invitation to give a couple of papers at a, a university at a what you might call their university town called Gumri, which is about two hours drive from the capital Yerevan. So that's how it started off. And then it sort of blossomed into a, a, a sort of a visit to discuss opportunities for cultural exchange in a, in a wider sense. Um, uh, I, I actually, I happen to know the son of the president of Armenia who lives in London and uh, the Armenian expatriate community are actually quite keen to, uh, to present the sort of rich and deep uh, cultural history of Armenia. So we were talking about it and he said, oh, uh, I'll send these details to my father, who's the president. So <laughs> it also, it snowballed from there. You know, I never, I never, well, no, I, never nothing. I never thought folklore would be a catalyst to these things. But anyway, I, that's how it happened. Well, I was going to say, nothing like starting from the top well, going impressed. straight through to the president. I'm impressed. Now, a lot of us have heard about Armenia, but yeah. um, I had to look at the atlas to actually spy out the location. And yeah. uh, perhaps you can tell us a little bit, bit about it, because it is landlocked, isn't it? it it's a landlocked country. It's got Georgia uh, to the north, which is a former Soviet republic. It's got uh, Azerbaijan uh, to, the, to the east. And then you've got uh, Turkey and Iran to the to, to the south and the west. So it's a landlocked uh, country. It's got uh, uh, a couple of very big lakes. One particularly Lake uh, Sevan, which uh, is about eighty kilometres long by ten kilometres wide and quite deep. Uh, but it, it it is a landlocked country. Um, it's um, it was a former Soviet republic, and. Uh, Yes, it's got a, it's got a deep and rich history. Tony. I saw um, in my Wikipedia research that there's a entity called the Lashin Corridor to Russia. Now, does that yep. still apply? Uh, it do it doesn't actually at the moment. But yeah, there was this corridor, but they have the 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 their route to Russia is really through Georgia, which yeah. is to the north, and they have a very good uh, relationship with Georgia. Not just politically, but um, but a, 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 in terms of a trade, and um, they also um, they don't have any diplomatic relations with Turkey, but they import what they goods and services from Turkey via Georgia. So there is no need for that corridor a, a, any longer. Okay, so it goes back to the Soviet Union and it, um, it, 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 it total does. control, as it were. It, now, it does. It's, it's, it's an old country, isn't it? It's got a lot of history to it. it it's got a very deep history. Um, it, it, they make claim to be the first country where wine was made, about mm -hmm. five or 6,000 uh, BC. Um, it was the first Christian country in the, in the third well, fourth, fourth century uh, AD. Um, it's it, it's got a uh, it's got a huge number of uh, uh, old monasteries, uh, churches, other artifacts from well well, well before the um, well before the, the the time the Muslim religion uh, 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 came in. So it, it's uh, it's got a very deep and rich cultural history, which I don't think people always kind of understand. Yeah. Yeah, because is it in Asia or is it in Europe or is it in well, Eurasia? <laughs> well, it's Eurasia. It's it's on it's on the cusp. Yeah, um, it, it 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 really is. And uh, I mean, make a very good ob observation there because um, when it, when it was under Soviet control, and indeed in the nineteen twenties and thirties, 
um, Stalin allowed them to continue practicing their Christian religion. I don't think he encouraged it, but he didn't persecute them yeah, because yeah. he always saw it as a as a bar- uh, uh, as the front line to the Islamic world, mm. uh, and and in many ways it still is actually because it's what a part of the Russian Orthodox Church. It, well, Armenia, yeah, it, it, it's yeah, it, it, it's it's a branch, it, it's a branch. That's yeah, right. and and I was actually quite surprised that um, uh, Christian worship has. Uh, it's very strong there. Um, believe it or not, ninety-eight percent of the population are Armenian Orthodox. Um, so it, it, it has a very strong and deep religious heritage, and uh, yeah, there is regular um, worship. Because under the communist setup, they, they, you know, I mean, we do not believe in God. We are atheists. Well, 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 well. well the, that that was a sort of obviously message put out, but yeah. but there were, there was practice of um, uh, Christianity in Armenia during that period without any any uh, uh, suppression. I don't think it was encouraged, but uh, you know the buildings were maintained; they weren't knocked down or or desecrated. And uh, uh, I, I I was actually very very surprised at that. But but at the same time. Um, they have a very good relationship with Iran. Mm. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> so we'll come on to that one in a moment. But just yeah, continuing sure. with the Orthodox Church aspect, yeah. Um, yeah. When, when we visited Russia, we were yeah. most impressed with the number of people attending church. And I think yeah. particularly in Russia, the Orthodox Church has a bit of a say in what goes on. It, 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 it does indeed. And you know, in some ways, the Orthodox Church is... In, uh, in in the old uh, Soviet uh, Union, have uh, have increased their uh, power and authority. It's, mm. quite, it's quite it really is quite surprising. And uh, you know, relations between the uh, uh, the church and the state are are, are good in Armenia, and uh, the uh, the state uh, you know promotes cultural heritage in terms of uh, uh, helping with the um, with the maintenance of of some of the churches and sort of profiles, profiles of churches as part of its, um, if you like, tourist package. The country was part of the Ottoman Empire for a while, wasn't it? When Turkey was uh, in That's an expansionist true. mood or mode. That's correct. Um, That's correct. Uh, what, what surprises me, Robert, is that they uh, were able to resist um, the Islamic faith. What, any ideas on that one? Um, I, 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 I have two, uh, basically. The, um, the, the, the there, there is there is a very deep, um, uh, a deep uh, religious belief again <laughs> in Armenia, which is uh, which is permeated through the families, uh, through a lot of the public buildings, and so on. And uh, and it was never. It, it was never suppressed or repressed under the um, Ottoman uh, Empire. That's the one thing. I think. Um, secondly, it, uh, it, it even even the Ottoman Empire was, if you like, aware of the very uh, deep and long-held Christian heritage. So yeah. it, 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 it 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 survived any uh, you know, uh, uh, persecution or repression. Not not that not that to be fair. I think there was. Uh, much under the um, Ottoman Empire until, of course, we you know, we came to the end of the First World War. But that's a separate. Yeah, thing. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, so, but, yeah, but they, yes, they, they uh, were surrounded, weren't they? Because you had Persian influences as well correct. at that time. And, um, you know, fr- from that point of view, if you sort of contrast them with the Balkans, where, yeah. you know, some of the countries actually did convert to Islam yep. and are still Islamic in their... Uh, yeah. The way in which they conduct themselves it, it's quite something, isn't it? It, it? it is, and I mean, again, interesting. Uh, there, there are no sort of minarets or buildings for Islamic uh, worship in uh, in Armenia. And I, I did look up some statistics, and the the Islamic population, if I could put it like that, in Armenia is about six hundred people. Mm. So it, it it had very, it, it, and it still has very very little um, influence probably at the moment for understandable reasons, but... 
Um, part of the reason that they don't seem to get on with Turkey is historical in terms of the genocide that took place in World War One, And of course, that meant a max mass exodus of the population to places like the States and Canada. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, there's a big uh, Armenian expat population in the United States, some seven or eight hundred thousand people, I'm told, and they uh, as someone put it to to me, they they, they have a, a very strong political influence there. Someone said, um, uh, "Not quite as strong as the Irish." Right. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 it 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 is having a it's an interesting uh, uh, manifestation that because uh, since the fall of the Soviet Union and the embracing of if you like of capitalism in Armenia, you have had quite a number of uh, wealthy expat armies who have invested into the country. Mm. Uh, for example, I, I, I visited a, uh, a, a large vineyard which uh, uh, has been built up by two um, expat Armenian families and also a carpet museum and factory, which again has uh, been uh, built up by Ar Armenian expats. So they, although they have you know, left the country, if you like, generations ago, there seems to be a, a still a strong um, uh, loyalty to to the country, uh, and uh, it was in the uh, early nineties when there was a big earthquake. Um, there was a uh, there's a very wealthy um, Armenian in the United States, Kakorian. He, mm -hmm. he, he 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 and uh, he he actually gave eight hundred million dollars to uh, to invest in. You know, re-establishing the infrastructure in the country, so you know that certainly shows a a great degree of uh, patriotism or loyalty. I was surprised. Continuing the history lesson, uh, they yeah. became part of the Soviet Union in 1922 at the same time as Georgia, and that was following the collapse of the Ottomans in World War One. Um, Correct. Can you just explain, Robert, how you know essentially? The Russian Revolution spilt over into this colonization of various adjoining well, countries. Yeah, well, well, I, I, I think it was partly because of the the Ottoman Empire was receding. Um, I think there was a a lot of, if you like, self determination in these uh, regions like Georgia and Armenia, and it, it, it coalesced at the time. Uh, quite well with the uh, what you might call the self determination in, in in Russia. So they came together, if you like, without without too much um, pressure yeah. or oppression. Uh, and uh, what also surprised me is that um, they they were well, they weren't. In, it was a planned economy. So you know they, for example, Armenia specialized in weaving imported cotton it also made all the lifts uh and very interestingly uh, and i found it, it supplied most of the scientists for the soviet space exploration yeah it, yeah it, it's, it's quite incredible it's all, from that point of view it's, 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 so they were you know, I, I, they were they weren't oppressed uh uh, I, 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 I'm not saying the you know, standard living was good, but they had a good education system, uh, particularly things like physics, chemistry, medicine, and so on. So yeah. they, they supplied a lot of the scientific community to to Russia, and you know, I suppose relatively peacefully coexisted. Yeah, again, and, a big surprise to me. Yes, and and very supportive to the Red Army in World War Two. Uh, 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 500,000 500, enlisted, and there were yeah. 175,000 casualties. That's incredible as a number, isn't it? it? it, 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 it it's incredible. And there are some very large sort of Soviet architecture style war memorials in, in, in Yerevan and in, in Gumri, a place I visited, um, to, to the so they, they, but they made, yeah, they made a considerable. Um, uh, sacrifice and uh, I suppose per perhaps more than some of the other Soviet republics. So they, they, you know, they, they, they never came under great uh, oppression from mm. Russia. Uh, mm. so, and 
always enjoyed a relatively cordial and you know, a relative independent uh, experience. And I guess that sort of sets them apart from Hungary and Czechoslovakia, where people were keen to actually get liberation. And um, that, yeah, that's right. And the Red Army moved in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, again, you you make a very good point there because obviously the uh, the tensions be, between the uh, the countries under the Soviet influence in the Eastern uh, Europe had had clearly had a very different experience from Armenia and Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Um, did and they the rely on? Came from <laughs> Stalin was from Georgia. Uncle Joe. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Uncle did, Jeff, yes. <laughs> did um Quite. did they get much financial support from Russia during the Soviet times, or or did they need it? I don't think they the the their star um products, if you like, are their wine and brandy. Very yeah. good. Uh, the climate and uh, um their their red wine used to be marketed as sort of Soviet Premier Cru. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it, 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 uh, and it's one of, and equally the brandy. Also, they have um, uh, again because that they have very fine fruit and vegetables. So a lot of that was exported and you know in crystallized and dried form. And uh, because of the education system, you know they, if you like, exported scientists yeah. to the rest of the Soviet Union. So um, uh, they they they. they they were uh, they were well regarded and uh, not oppressed. Interestingly enough, yeah, and of course they have got mineral resources as well, haven't they? They've they've got mineral resources as well, which mm. uh, 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 are still there to be exploited. But uh, I, I think, I mean, although they are they are a they're a capitalist country like like Russia's, I suppose. Now, yeah. uh, I they, I think it, it would be difficult for them where their geographically not to be under Soviet influence. Uh, it's either that or Islamic influence. Well, that's and, right, yeah. And I think they prefer the Soviet influence, to be honest I'm, with you. Yeah, I, I think you're right. So we then get around to 1991, effectively yep. the Russian system collapses. Um, yep. Did they find it difficult to make the transition into a democracy or were they really running a democracy up till then in any case? Well, well it, 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 the, the transition internally was not was not difficult but it did provoke uh, the, the, the first war with Azerbaijan over these yeah. disputed uh, uh, territories um, uh, and I think the the other thing was of course they were part of the Soviet planned economy so uh, uh, basically the economy collapsed um, uh, and what what I found very interesting was particularly, on the drive from Yerevan to Gumri is we pass through a, a number of uh, quote towns and villages where no one was there and they had been centers of production. It, it had all collapsed, the mm. factories had closed and the people left. Um, yeah. and, and so you still see uh, uh, very visible signs of the collapse of the economy. And it took, it took 10 to 15 years um, to, if you like, it, it established the capitalist um, economy. They, they've had uh, investments from, from the European Bank for Reconstruction Development. Um, there has inevitably been some investment from Russia yeah. um, uh, 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 and so on, but it, it, it took 10 to 15 years. And uh, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I, I think times were, were difficult in the, in, 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 in the 1990s. Despite being on the edge of Asia, they, I think, see themselves as European in terms of the fact that they are members of the Council of Europe. That's, that's right. And uh, I was if to, as if to emphasize that um, Russian used to be the second language of the country and, uh, and it's been replaced by English as the second language, particularly amongst those who are under 40, those, if you like, who were in education. Yeah. Since the fall of the so because that is seen as the way to a to a better career if you can yes. speak uh, English uh, it, it, it considerably enhances your career opportunity so uh, uh, so yeah, yeah yeah they are 
that they are uh, Western looking and they are looking for uh, you know, markets for their goods and expertise and in, in Western Europe. Yeah, yeah. Now, in, in, in terms of the, the uh, Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, is that now sorted or is that still an ongoing problem? Uh, I think it's I think it's on temporary hold. If you want, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, Tony, uh, I mean, uh, Russia brokered this peace, uh, which um, the Armenians say advanced advantaged Azerbaijan. Um, the current prime minister who was had to sign this uh, peace agreement is uh, not too popular. Um, the the disputed territory it, it is um, a lot of the Armenians have left uh, they, they've come to Armenia and uh, a lot of them literally destroyed their houses there yeah yeah and and this is now being complemented by um, Azerbaijan is trying to uh, culturally eradicate a lot of the uh, artifact Armenian artifacts there and um, uh, Armenia has tried to get UNESCO in to record and photo photograph this, but it's been resisted by Azerbaijan. So th th this tension is there, and uh, unfortunately, it's going to flare up again at some point. What, what's the conflict all about? I mean, obviously, it's land, but is it valuable land? Or it, it, yeah, yes, the, 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 there's some interesting minerals, minerals there, gold in particular. Um, it's also the <laughs> the, the, the disputed territory, the majority of the population are, are Armenians. Right. Or, 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 and this makes it difficult. It's not as if it's uh, Armenians an oppressed minority, but you know, historically, Azerbaijan has asserted its influence. Azerbaijan is uh, increasingly Muslim. Mm. So that, 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 that just increases the tension. So you know, I... I <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I think other events will uh, will be a catalyst to uh, renewed aggression at some point. I, I I I don't know how it's going to be solved, frankly. Yeah, yeah. And neither and neither do they. No, I mean, do you think Russia will continue to try and act as the peacemaker? Or I I I, I, I think it has to. I, th I think it has to. Um, and uh, if, 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 if the Armenians don't see uh, Russia as being uh, as fair as they should be. So if that perception continues, then it may create more political tension with, with Russia. Mm. So I think it's, it, it, but, but it is, a, the borders are closed. Um, uh, both, both countries still retain their armaments. App apparently, um, uh, Armenia has good um, tactical armaments and, um, but uh, Azerbaijan is, uh, developing its what's called drone warfare yeah so not, 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 peace and reconciliation is a very temporary fact yeah. unfortunately yeah yeah, yeah. robert tur turning to your actual visit tell us about some of the highlights yeah yes i mean uh, uh, i think so, there were three or four things that i found particularly high one is uh on the first day i was there i went to this um a conference or celebration of a of, of a an Armenian um, uh, space um, scientist who uh, uh, developed these uh, tractors, as I term them, that are you, you, automated tractors that you've seen used on the Moon and Mars. Moon um, rovers. <laughs> moon rovers. Yeah. Moon rovers. Ab uh, absolutely. And as I say, that's why I discovered that. Um, uh, Scientists from Armenia have been were very much at the forefront of uh, of Soviet space um, exploration, and what it what I also found very interesting is just as we have Elon Musk and uh, Bezos, if you like, uh, embarking on uh, private investment yeah. in space exploration, uh, some of the Soviet oligarchs are doing the same. Oh, really? Yes. Which we don't know about yet. Which which we don't know about, but this came out quite interestingly at uh, uh, some of the uh, some of the presentations which were were, were made. We had uh, a couple of people from the Russian Academy of Sciences. There were one or two from the West, including a a, a French professor of astrophysics at the University of, 
Essex and so on, but it was a, and someone from the European Space Agency. But no, uh, uh, the, the, there's a lot of private Soviet um, investment in, in, in space. And um, it, since I got, I wonder if uh, that was behind blowing up some of the Soviet satellites. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. You know, because because uh, <laughs> they want to make, pardon the pun, more room in space. Yeah, 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 very much so. Yeah, so that, that was the first thing. Um, I, I then had um, uh, two days uh, being uh, hosted at uh, a number of uh, a number of museums, a, a carpet museum, um, the National Gallery, where some wonderful uh, maritime paintings. Um, I went to the um, I suppose the equivalent of the British Museum, yeah. where they've got lots of real books and so on. And uh, I also had a had a meeting with the lady at the uh, Ministry of uh, Science and Culture, who heads up um, what was termed uh, folklore, heritage, and culture. And um, she, believe it or not, um, had uh, done a postgraduate degree in the UK and had uh, done an assignment. She comes from the museum back. Uh, than the assignment at the Castle Museum in Norwich. So it was a, it's a, it's a, it's small, a small world. world. <laughs> <laughs> they get yeah, around. Yeah, yeah uh, ab absolutely. And of course, the, the, that, that, that aspect of it was part of the reason for the trip, wasn't it? The, it, the it, cultural it, it, bit. It, the, the cultural, it, it <laughs> yeah. was. And, yeah. and uh, I, I, again, um, I, I, was, I was very impressed at how well educated the younger people are. They're, they're very, they're very kind of motivated. Um, all speak very good English, um, and uh, I should, if I can, if I be a little bit controversial, they don't have some of the hang-ups that young people do in Western Europe these days. <laughs> I, I, won't I, I, won't, I won't comment, but I nod <laughs> sagely. <laughs> so, now, now, <laughs> we, we, we've got to sort of say to the, the our viewers, our yes. people that watch yes. us, uh, that we yeah. do obviously come up to with a, a list of topics. And the yeah. next topic is the visit to the vineyard and but, that famous Armenia brandy. Now, I bet you enjoyed that day. Well, well, well that was very good. But this was a personal tour. We, we, uh, this vineyard's about 30, 40 kilometres from Yerevan. And this is the <coughs> vineyard where these two Armenian expat families have invested. They employ about 700 people, about three or 400 in the, in the production, and then the rest are farmers effectively growing yeah. grapes. So, so we started <coughs> off with a, with a nice bottle of champagne at 10.30, uh, just to sort of... <laughs> Get the palate going. <laughs> Get the palate going, and then we had the, we had the, we had the view of the processing, the production, the sellers, uh, 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 and so on. Uh, and that, I suppose, lasted till one o'clock. And then there was an excellent lunch where the uh, the chief executive PA hosted me and two others. And uh, uh, we had some excellent white wine, red wine, and they now produce their own port. And in fact, they gave me a bottle of port, which I took back with me, and brandy. So uh, we left about half past three, four o'clock, and I snoozed most of the way back. <laughs> And, uh, and word got back to me, the, the chief executive uh, person said, I can't remember what I said to him because he got me so drunk. <laughs> but the brandy has always been famous, hasn't it? The, 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 the brandy, the brandy is, is really good. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it's uh, I mean, it, and this is a, a, a Frenchman I was speaking to there said, it's as good as our cognac. Yeah. That is quite an addition yeah. coming from a Frenchman. Yeah, yeah very but much so. It, 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 it really... It, the wine and brandy are sort of undiscovered gems, if you like, of Armenia. Now, on the list, we've also got these papers. At, yes, yes. Uh... <coughs> yes, indeed. I I, I went to the uh, the University of Gumri, and they, they've got this department. It's called the Department of Armenological Studies, and they were having a conference. And I gave a paper on the, uh, the uh, folklore myths of mountains the mm -hmm. first day, and uh, the local bishop came along to listen to me. I don't know whether I, <laughs> I was there to give them inspiration, but uh, uh, it's only about 60 people there, the press, I gave, a, I, 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 I gave an interview and uh, that, that, that was, 
And, and in fact, the bishop got up afterwards and gave his own little sermon afterwards about <laughs> about how how important uh, myths uh, the mountains are in the worship of God. This was a translation given to me, so I clearly I clearly sparked something in <laughs> in, in him. <laughs> and, and then and then the second day uh, it was a, a paper on child law l o r e yeah. um, you know, i was a custom child and i gave this with a uh, with a lady i know uh, from uh, from uh, the the university and we were comparing and, cra and contrasting children's habits and customs in in the uk and armenia and in fact it's uh, it, it's it's going to be published as a, a, a as a small as a small book uh, um, in armenian and i'll get an english translation of it uh, and, and in conclusion, summit of the minds. Yeah, yes. Um, I, I, this this was pure luck. Um, there is a there is a, a town in Armenia called Dilijan, which, um, funny enough, looks a bit like Davos. It's about six seven thousand foot above sea level, and funny enough, the central bank is uh, of Armenia is located there, and they had this um, sort of mini Davos at, at the central bank, and uh, I met some. A very interesting people, the, the governor of the Central Bank of Armenia, the governor of the Central Bank of Georgia came. Um, there were a number of uh, people from uh, Western Europe there and from Russia. And it, it, it covered a number, a number of uh, ge ge geopolitical, um, technical, financial, other, other topics. Uh, and it, it was a two day thing. There was a, a very fine dinner the first night with plenty of uh, Armenian wine and brandy, and, uh, <laughs> and it was a it was a wonderful conclusion. Yeah, yeah. And do you have any plans to go back? Yes, I do because uh, they've asked me if I'd come back next uh, September when they're having a, a, a another of these conferences. And they want to include some cultural aspects in it, so it's the uh, I think the second week in week in September. So yes, I uh, I definitely look forward to. Uh, Renew, re, renewing uh, my uh, acquaintanceship with Armenia. It was a great trip, Tony. It was good. I'm pleased to hear that, Robert. And as ever, many, many thanks for sparing me some time to, to talk about it. It's an intriguing place. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you yeah. know, what can I say, I think? <laughs> I think I think what I might do is start is start teach yourself Armenian lessons in all the <laughs> That's a, that's a topic for another day. Tim. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, good to see you again. Many, many thanks. Take care. A little bit early. Happy Christmas. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot then, Tony. That's a pleasure. Thanks, Robert. Bye.